Okay, so today's video, I'm going to be sharing with all of you my five favorite foods that I preload with. So this is amazing if you were trying to lose weight while following a oil-free, whole food plant-based diet, the starch solution, or even just using the 50-50 plate as a weight loss tool. So let's get into it. Everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Stasia. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top favorite five foods that I've been using to preload since the beginning of this year. Now, some of you might be asking, what is preloading? I have actually made several videos where I go into more detail about what preloading is, so I can leave some of those in my description box below if you're interested in learning more. But in a nutshell, preloading simply means to fill up with non-starchy vegetables, AKA low calorie dense foods before eating your main meal. Now I do want to point out that preloading has changed the game for me. Honestly, I can't stress my excitement enough. It's a game changer. So I have tried using the 50 50 plate method in the past, but I always found that I was pretty hungry fairly quickly after eating my 50 50 plate. We're talking maybe like an hour or so maybe afterwards. So it just wasn't enough to keep me full until my next meal. With preloading, I'm finding that that has taken away that problem altogether. So with preloading, I fill up on as much non starchy vegetables as I want. And then I finish off my meal with my starches. I am what you would describe as a volume eater, like 100%. So this method works much, much better than even the 50-50 plate. But keeping in mind, both of them are simply tools to just help us lose weight in the most painless way. They both are targeted at reducing the overall calorie density of the entire meal. So it's just a matter of preference which tool you prefer. Me personally, I love preloading. Now, with that being said, the foods I'm going to be showing today are perfect for either preloading or using as your non-starchy veg for a 50-50 plate. So either way, these foods can work for you. As most of you know, I have been following a very specific meal plan of my own since the beginning of January 2023. And I know a lot of you are out there following it with me. So today's video, I'm actually going to be showing a lot of the foods that are within that meal plan that I'm using on a very regular basis. My meal plan heavily focuses on using preloading as a tool for weight loss. It has been working wonders for me and I will be making a video at the end of this month with a complete update. So if you haven't grabbed a copy yet and you're interested in doing so, the link to my meal plan will be posted in my description box below. Also, if you're simply new to this lifestyle or just bored of your, you know, your weekly rotations, we all get stuck in them sometimes, then don't worry, I got you for that as well. Both of my weight loss recipe eBooks will be on sale to the first 10 people by the time I release this video at 50% off. My first weight loss recipe eBook is filled with over 50 oil-free whole food plant-based recipes. And my second weight loss recipe eBook is one of my newer ones and it is 30 oil-free dressings and sauces. And especially if you're new to this lifestyle, the oil-free dressings and sauces are everything. So be one of the first 10 people to take advantage of the 50% off discount. Those links will also be in my description box below. All right, so let's get into the video and discuss my top five foods I love to preload with. All right, so the first one is soup. Now this one might be an obvious one, maybe not, but soup, you know, it never gets old, especially when you live somewhere where it is minus 40 degrees on a good day. Just kidding, that's on a bad day, but still, minus 40 degrees, come on. So soup definitely has been my best friend surviving this winter, and it honestly just makes for the easiest way to preload. The reason why soup is one of the best things that you can preload with is because of the water content. So it's the water content that actually makes you feel nice and full. There have actually been studies done showing that a soup is better to preload with even over a salad. And again, it's because of that rich water content. Now, when I do preload with soup, it is worth mentioning that I do watch my portions just because soup can be so filling from all of that water that I just make sure that I kind of limit that one to, you know, a bowl or a bowl and a half, I guess, just depending on the size of your bowl, but the bowl I'm referring to is a little bit on the smaller side, um, just because I don't want to just fill up on the soup. You do always want to make sure that you leave room to eat those starches. Your whole meal is not supposed to just be those non-starchy vegetables because you will be starving and you just, 
cannot exist on non starchy vegetables. So always be sure to leave room, but definitely soup is one of the easiest things that you can preload with. It's also so great because it's something that you can make in advance. So if you work throughout the week, no problem, whip up a nice huge pot of soup on the weekend. And you know, you can just kind of eat out of that all week, or you can even make it further in advance and throw it in your freezer in individual containers and just take them out as you need to eat them. In my opinion, soup has been the easiest thing of all to preload with. Okay, so the second thing, which is also sort of an obvious one, is salad. I feel that salad is the runner up to soup, as I already discussed, but I personally just love salads. Now, if you are not a salad person, you definitely don't need to preload with salad, because I find that a lot of people, especially who are new to this lifestyle, they're not too keen on eating a ton of veggies, and maybe you're just easing your way into this lifestyle. So that's totally fine. If salad's not your thing, you know, forget the salad. It is definitely by far not something that you have to preload with. Me personally, I love vegetables. My husband is always shocked with the amount of vegetables that I can eat in one sitting. So it's just something that I personally actually enjoy. And I feel that it fills me up. Now the key to enjoying a really good salad, in my opinion, is going back to the dressings and sauces. It is so important to find one that you really like. And to be honest, I think you only really need to find even one or two that you love. And like many things, many foods that we eat, just keep those on rotation. I find that one of the biggest complaints following this lifestyle that I see is people not knowing how to dress their food because most of the store-bought items unfortunately have oil in them. So when you're new to this lifestyle, you know, even when you're not new, you can still be scrambling sometimes like, you know, what can I use that doesn't have oil in it? So finding, you know, your one or two or three favorite oil-free sauces and dressings is going to be a game changer for you. So again, if you already have a copy of my oil-free dressings and sauces ebook, then there's a ton in there to choose from. I think there's 30 recipes in there to choose from. And even if you don't, even a quick Google search, try to find one that you love, and that's what's going to bring that salad to life. And another thing worth mentioning about salads, I feel like you know, when people think of a salad, they just think of just leafy greens, maybe some cucumbers, maybe tomatoes, like super, super basic and standard, you know, but really a salad can be limitless, you know, and it doesn't even have to have leafy greens in it. Actually, there's all kinds of different salads that you can throw together. So definitely don't shy away from being creative with making and perfecting a good salad, one that you will actually enjoy. My favorite, as I've mentioned a few times now in some of my videos, is simply just to use one of those pre-packaged coleslaw bags. I love eating cabbage. Cabbage is in the cruciferous family and super, super healthy for us. So I love getting in that raw cabbage as often as I can. And aside from that, I just find that it's the most convenient because it's just kind of ready to go, a quick rinse, dump it, dump it in the bowl. I can make it in advance. And unlike those spring leafy mixes of greens and stuff, I find that they go bad really fast. So the coleslaw, the cabbage, it holds up excellent in the fridge. So I can make a salad and it's gonna last for a few days and be just as good as the first day. So the easiest thing that I do is just have a huge salad made in advance. That way, when I go to eat my lunch or my dinner, I can just pull out that salad and already I have a preloading meal ready to go before I jump into the main part. Okay, so this next one is not so popular, but it's popular to me. It's one of my favorite, favorite preloading vegetables right now, and that is cabbage steaks. Oh my goodness, if you have not tried cabbage steaks, please do. They are so delicious. So much like, let's say garlic, when you throw it in the oven to roast it, cabbage like garlic kind of sweetens up as you cook it in the oven. I just love, love, love the taste of these cabbage steaks. So I basically just slice a head of cabbage into roughly one inch slices and season it however I feel to season it. Sometimes it's just with a little bit of salt and pepper. Other times I might use a little bit of Montreal steak spice or even other times I might add some nutritional yeast. It just kind of really depends. But again, there's tons of different options that you can play around with to get it to how you want it. And then my favorite part is just dipping it in a little bit of nice hot sauce or my favorite buffalo sauce. Oh my goodness, I can eat cabbage steaks every single day and probably never get bored of them. They are fantastic. 
Now they probably don't hold up quite as well as maybe a super salad does in terms of making them in advance, but I don't let that deter me. When I've got the time, I'm gonna throw them in the oven nice and fresh and have that for my dinner. I absolutely am obsessed with the cabbage steaks, so I hope you guys give those a try. Right, so the next food that I'm loving eating and also very, very easy to throw together are just simply roasted veggies. Now, I don't complicate it. I don't do anything fancy on them. I personally just love them with some salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of nutritional yeast, but that's pretty much it. So I just actually line a baking sheet with some parchment paper and I'll either use frozen veggies I have on hand or fresh veggies or both and just throw them in the oven at 400 and bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes or so. Then my little tip is that at the very end when they're basically done, I switch my setting to the broil setting and just broil them for about five or six minutes to get that roasted type of texture to them. Yeah, so it's lunchtime and my mouth is literally watering talking about this. <laughs> so I'm telling you, roasted veggies have been such a huge part of my weight loss journey. And again, they're kind of something that I really don't get sick of. You definitely can make these in advance and they'll hold up probably pretty well in the fridge. I say probably because they never last more than probably two days around here. But either way, they're super easy just to whip together, especially if you're using frozen ingredients, then you know, how hard is that just to dump that on a pan, salt and pepper and away you go. Oh, and another thing, have you ever tried roasted veggies in a salad? So that's what I would call a warm salad and oh, it is amazing to throw some nice warm roasted veggies mixed in on a bed of greens. Oh my goodness, so, so, so good. So that's what I'm talking about, going back to the salad thing that, you know, you can get creative and step outside of that, you know, the box of just like greens, tomatoes, cucumbers. So definitely you can get creative, but combine those two. Oh my goodness, you will thank me later. <laughs> All right, so moving along to the next thing and my last food that I'm going to be talking about today is fruit. So I know there is so much debate, constant debate in the world to eat fruit, to not eat fruit. Please, for the love of all goodness, do not be afraid of fruit. I had lost 65 pounds eating fruit, tons of fruit, every single day, and it did not hinder my weight loss at all. Fruit is super healing. It's got a super high water content, tons of fiber. You do not need to be afraid of fruit. Now, with that being said, I'm speaking in, you know, a very general common sense type of context here. I'm not talking about solely exist on fruit alone, although there are some people who choose to do that. That's not my world, so I'm not going to speak on it. But from my own personal experience, I'm just saying, generally speaking, if you want to enjoy some fruit even a few times a day, please do not worry about that. So basically what I'm doing with fruit is every morning before I start my breakfast, I start with eating some fruit. So usually that's about two to three pieces of fruit, or I love using frozen fruit and just defrosting it um, and eating a bowl of that. So I'll usually portion out maybe like a cup of cherries, a cup of raspberries, or and slice up half of a banana with it, something along those lines. But I've been enjoying starting my day with some fruit, and then I move on to whatever my starch will be. I'm also using fruit as a snack. Fruit is literally the perfect thing to snack on because most times when we truly need a snack, we just need some kind of like pick me up, right? And because fruit does have those natural sugars in them, they are the perfect thing to go to when you kind of need that little pick me up. So I've also been using fruit in the middle of the day or even at nighttime. If I'm just having a hankering for something, you know, I'm a little bit hungry, then fruit as well as vegetables, but I definitely don't shy away from fruit if that's what I'm feeling. That has been my go-to. All right, everyone. So those are my five foods that I've been preloading with. And again, don't forget, even if you're not preloading and say you're using the 50-50 plate instead, all of those foods I mentioned are also perfect for that as well. It's all about just trying to reduce that overall caloric density of your meal. And by loading up on low calorie dense fruits and vegetables, that is going to help you feel full while keeping you in a calorie deficit so that you can lose weight. The problem with weight loss is not how much we eat, but more what are we eating. When you're a volume eater and you're filling up on higher calorie dense foods, which almost all processed foods <laughs> are high calorie dense foods, that's where weight can become problematic. But when you're following an oil-free whole food plant-based diet and you're filling up on a lot of non-starchy fruits and vegetables, along with those starchy foods, 
foods such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, rice, beans. It's the perfect combination. Even those things are lower calorie dense foods. So even combining those two foods, the non-starchy and the starchy, you can still eat a ton of food and lose weight. All right, everyone, I'm going to leave it here. Again, if you're interested in checking out my exact meal plan, that link will be in my description box below. I just want to say thank you to everyone watching this video. If you are new to my channel and want to follow along for more content following a whole food plant-based diet, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you stick around. And if you found some value in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up on your way out. Thanks so much for watching everyone and we will see you in the next one.